That's one sick yeah, ass line. What the hell? That Chatteris? <laughs> Get out of here, stealing all the line. I think. Kevin took uh, freestyle snowboarding to another level. Like the thing that I remember most about Kevin was that first frontside 1080 in, in the backcountry. Nobody at that time thought it was possible. And then, boom, he did it. And it was amazing. And of course, whenever you do something, you don't know if you do it good or not. Because back in those days, you had to wait two weeks for film to be tra actually transferred. All of us filmers would shoot as much footage as we could, we'd get the film processed, the footage would come back on a VHS tape and everybody would show up in Mike's family room. And you're like sitting there biting your teeth, hoping that that one shot you had in mind came out exactly the way you thought it would. And then Mike or Dave would be like, ah, kind of a bobble in the beginning. Like, you kind of blew the shot. <laughs> Shooting film is a totally different monster. You know, when you shoot film, you gotta make it count. You don't just like press the button and look at your shot and go, oh, my framing's off, I wish I did that, you know, delete. So the film thing is definitely, you know, you learn to be more conservative and press the button when you know you got your crap together. I mean, seriously, like, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I was I'm like, dude, if I blow my chance with these guys, because back then that was it. If, if, if I fucking blow my chance with these dudes, I'm done. You know, because it's money. And this is what we used to shoot was 100 foot daylight loads, three minutes of three minutes of footage, a dollar a foot, so 100 bucks every time you shoot this. So four rolls, one day of shooting, just the shooting costs 400 bucks for the one day. So we used to shoot on 16 millimeter, and this is all. Was it? Did it go to 2005? When did we stop shooting film? I think it was 2005. So this is basically 1989. And then two years I worked for Fall Line, and then once we did TB2 with Mac Dog, all the way to 2005. And then this is all the, and these are stacked double, so they're all there's like twice as many in here as you can see right now. So yeah, it's kind of funny, you know, if you think about the past when you used to have to watch a trailer, we'd make a movie, and we'd make like the TB4 trailer, and we'd put it on VHS, and then they'd send it out to the shops, and the only way to see the trailer is if you were in a shop, right? Because there was no internet, right. and now. To watch, to watch a trailer, you just make one click and you just watch it. But people that are 15 years old right now are watching the movies, don't realize that you couldn't, you can just click and watch something. You certainly couldn't just click to a BitTorrent and steal it for free either. I mean, you had to like buy it or put two VHS machines together, obviously, and copy it tape to tape. <clears throat> Lots changed, that's for sure. There's something cool about just making a DVD and something you can hold in your hands and the anticipation of waiting for that movie to come out and seeing what all the writers did. and if they can actually one up their segments from last year. And I think that really helps drive the progression of the sport. As much as I like the YouTube and all the free content out there, I really think it's important to kind of have at least one or two or three good movies out there a year that people, that the kids can buy and watch. That's not just a, a YouTube phenomenon. I think when I look back at my snowboard career, I think I was very lucky to get in with those guys in the first place because they're super professional and and organized. Like we like wake up Pretty much four in the morning every every day. You know, back in the day, it was always like pulling teeth to get the riders to get up that early, and and I think it still is these days. And you know, they, they probably lose some riders too that don't want to, you know, always get up that early to get out there. But it's kind of what you got to do, you know. If you want to be uh, one of those guys, one of those snowboarders in those movies, it really all comes down to hard work. So you're up before it's even light and you're getting together and heading out to where you've got to go and usually you've got to hike through a lot of powder and get to your obstacle, fix your takeoff, get ready to do it. And then when the light comes out and it's good enough, you're ready to go. If you want to get some good footage in the can, the sun comes up and you only have you know, from sunrise until about 11.30 or noon to shoot, and then everything goes in the shade. You know, so yeah, just, it's all about the lighting and caring about the lighting, and that's why we get up so early. A lot of riders came by Mike's house, like they tried to film for a standard movie, and then they would get burnt out like in two weeks. Like, they'd come and stay like a week, and they're like, fuck this, this sucks. 
I want to wake up four in, four in the morning. You know, the, the nice thing about you know Standard, they had the the willingness to put in the time and energy to go out there and and be there. You know, like I say, one of those things that's has always set them apart. Now a lot of people have pretty much copied what they've done. To me, the best snowboard film companies will always be the ones that show everything. I want to see pe rad people segments, but I also want to see people talking. I want to see the, gu the guys break it down and just really get to the, the feeling of what it's like to ride a snowboard and the, the thing that we all embrace and love about snowboarding, but really shows the cutting edge of what's going on. And I just, I think ultimately the best snowboard movie has yet to be made. I think that's where all this film stuff's heading. It's not just like, oh, banger, 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 stop. We know nothing about this person. Who is this guy? What does he feel? Does he go to the store? You know, does he like wash his clothes? Does he, have, does he do the things that normal everybody does? Of course. So show it. Because really, I think with a, with a video part, it's all about music and being able to capture that person. I've always loved snowboarding as, as like a global thing and not only rail or not only contest or not only filming or backcountry. I like to, I love to do everything and um, I think this is the heart of uh, standard films. It's just like grab your board and try to show like what snowboarding means to me and if it's like a rail or a park day or pow, just do it and that's, that, that's what I love in snowboarding because you get your stick, you get mountains, go for it, ride. Rewinding 20 years, I didn't think I'd be sitting here now making a 20th video. For sure, the first couple years, I definitely didn't think we'd be getting a 20. When we got to 15, I was thinking there was a good chance we'd make it to 20. Or pretty much when we got to 15, I knew I had to make it to 20. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I remember the first couple years, just, yeah, just being nervous we could even make a movie. Like, are we going to have enough footage? We're gonna, we're, it's not gonna happen. We're not gonna get enough footage. I'd be so panicked. I'd stay up at night. And then after like six or seven movies, I think it was actually after 10 movies, I finally realized like, you know what? You shoot all year, you make a movie. It might not be as good as the one the year before. It might be better. You know, you're not gonna always hit a home run or maybe you're never gonna hit a home run as far as some people could say, but if you shoot all year, you'll make a movie. If you would have told me three years ago you're going to be in TB20, I would have laughed at you. The first film I filmed with, it's TB5. 15 years later, I'm still in a movie. And to be a part of this is seriously a dream come true. Well, I expect TB20 to be, you know, a diverse, progressive snowboarding movie with all, some Alaska stuff in it, big mountain stuff, and some handrail stuff, and jumps and everything. So I know Mike has always wanted it to be like that, you know? And I hope that's what TB20 is. I'm sure it will be. Yeah, I'm definitely not surprised that Standard's still in the game making snowboard movies. They just, they have so much passion, so much knowledge, um, and still really love to get out there and shred, so. Yeah, the question is, will there be a TV 30? <laughs>